Do you know that feeling of complete and total overwhelm as you haul your kids and yourself to activity after activity every single day? We all had a brief reprieve from it during the pandemic, and now to me it feels like time is speeding back up. Here's the thing, you don't have to get back on the hamster wheel. Welcome to Worldly Families, I'm Justine Janae. Traveling to over 40 countries and living abroad has opened my eyes to new ways of being and doing. I'm all about helping you expand your horizons so you can live and parent more intentionally and more joyfully. In this video, we'll be diving into chapter two of the Danish way of parenting. P is for play. We'll explore another way to live, choosing to live outside the rat race, even if you have a regular nine to five job. I covered similar topics in my videos on simplicity parenting and improv parenting, a term I think I made up. So please check those out for a deeper dive. I've linked them below. The status quo. First, we need to look at the US American status quo. In the past 50 years, the amount of hours children have for free play has declined dramatically. Parents are enrolling their kids in more and more extracurriculars, wanting their kids to be well-rounded, smart, and athletic. Even play dates are scheduled. When I was a kid growing up, there were a bunch of kids in my neighborhood and we'd all go out and play every day after school, on the weekends, and all summer long. Fast forward to today and kids have so many activities going on that no one is outside playing. And in order to get on the calendar for a play date, we often have to schedule weeks and sometimes even months in advance. I wish I was joking. <laughs> the context. The issue with all this overscheduling is that it doesn't leave time for enough free play. Play makes kids less anxious. It teaches them resilience, how to regulate their emotions, how to cope with stress, and how to make friends. Any of that sound important? In Denmark, for a long time, kids weren't allowed to even start school until the age of seven. And school isn't just focused on sports and academics. It's focused on developing the whole child. This approach allows kids to develop what psychologists call an internal locus of control. The feeling that they are creators of and not victims of their lives. Kids need space to try things out and challenge themselves at the right level. They know how much stress they can handle. Psychologists call this proximal development and it's core to Danish parenting. An example of this is my son Onyx has been learning to walk and now run. When he steps up onto a curb, at first he needed a lot of help, a full handhold. Now I just put my leg nearby and he rests one hand on it gently for stability as he steps up. Soon he won't need help at all. If I continue to offer my hand when he doesn't actually need it, he won't develop mastery or the self-esteem and independence that comes with it. One of my favorite quotes is, what one can do, one must do. This applies to our kids too. The takeaways. Here are the takeaways from the play chapter of the Danish way of parenting. One, turn it off. Power off your family's electronic devices completely to enhance imagination. Two, create an enriching environment. To enhance brain development, have a wide variety of materials around that your children can play with to stimulate their senses. Three, use art. Supply the supplies and then let them try. You don't need to play instructor. Four, let them explore outside. Find a relatively safe place where you can let your kids explore freely and get in touch with nature. Five, mix children of different ages. This way kids can learn to lead and follow, to help others and to be helped. They also learn self-control and negotiation. Six, let them be free and forget the guilt. Parents in the US can often feel pressure to enroll their kids in every enriching activity they can and they might feel guilty for not providing their kids with these opportunities when they don't. But what kids really need is time to play freely. Let them be in control rather than making everything they do adult-led. Seven, be real. Get down on your kid's level. Be silly, follow their lead, and have fun with them for at least 20 minutes per day. That's one of the greatest gifts you can give your kids. Eight. Let them play alone too. Solo time with their toys can be very therapeutic for kids as they reenact and process through what's happening in their lives through play. Nine, create an obstacle course. Using what you already have in new ways can help them to develop their imagination. 10, get other parents involved. The more the other parents in your circle value free play, the more support you have and the more you can get your kids together to let them play freely without being adult led. 
11. Avoid intervening too quickly. Dealing with the challenging behaviors of others can help your kids develop self-control and resilience and learn some of the most valuable lessons in life. 12. Let go. When you feel the need to control your kids' play or their interactions with others, step back, take a breath, and remind yourself that allowing them to navigate the world independently is helping them develop important life skills. I hope these tips help you cultivate play in your family. Next time, we'll dive into the chapter on authenticity. I'll see you in the next video. Where's that eight? La 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 la, I don't know what number I'm on. What did I say? La 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 la, there's no way to know.